Hey guys, it's me, Alessandra. I want to welcome you all back to my YouTube channel. Today I am sharing my day-to-day, -day, natural, chemical-free, vegan, plant-based, all of that good stuff makeup look. I want to show you guys how amazing natural products are because I know a lot of people think, I was that person too, that these products wouldn't be as good as the stuff that we've been used to. But let me tell you, they are so much better. Not to mention, they are healing, they're nourishing, they're calming, they're soothing your skin whilst you wear them which is ultimately what we want when we want to get our skin to a good place and we want our skin journey to be smooth because products with chemicals in them are going to do the exact opposite it's going to cause breakouts it's going to clog our skin it's going to damage our skin god knows what these chemicals do god knows but i'm going to take you step by step through what I use, how I use it, introduce you to some brands and hopefully give you guys a little bit more confidence in using these sort of products and purchasing them. Before we jump into the video guys, a little reminder to please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell so that you don't miss a video I upload every Sunday. Also head over to my Instagram, I'm over there daily, come say hey, I love to hear from you guys, it's at honestly Alessandra. So let's do this. So I'm just pinning my hair back to get it out of the way. And I've already moisturized and cleansed my skin. So make sure you do those steps. They're really important because you want a clean base to apply all the products onto. So make sure you go and do that. And then I go in with a moisturizer. Recently, I've been leaning towards more serums and oils. I don't know whether it's because it's very hot out and my skin's very dry. I do have very, very sensitive skin and I do find sometimes that creams can clog my pores and then I have breakouts. So the product that I've been using a lot of uh, recently, and then I did years before, but I've come back to it, is the Pi Rosehip Bio Regenerate Oil. This oil is just amazing. It's so light, like you think oils are gonna be heavy. It's not, it's very light. And I just take a couple of drops. You can see it's like a little pipette pop it into my hand, get about three drops. And then I just press it into my skin very lightly. I mentioned before, it's a very light product, so it doesn't feel too heavy and doing it this way as well doesn't feel like you've got loads of product on your skin. I will let that set in while I apply the next few products and get my juice and prep my area to get ready in in the morning. The next thing I do is put on some eye cream. The one I'm using currently, and actually it's the only one I'm sticking to at the moment, I really love it, is White Rabbit's Chamomile and Carrot Seed Eye Cream. It's such a lovely calming product. Um, I know I said I didn't use cream, but I do use the cream around my eyes. Oh, I may have put a tiny bit too much on. It's so refreshing on my eyes. It always just makes me feel more awake. So I'll rub the product in and then I'll just tap it. And as far as prepping my skin, that is basically it. So I've washed, cleansed, I've moisturized and I've put some eye cream on and that is that. Now I'll let that set in while I go grab my juice and my lemon and water and prepare myself for the morning. So those products are nicely set in now and I'm gonna go ahead and put on my primer, which is the next step. So I've been using Jane Ardale's Smooth Affair Primer, which I have to say is really good. It's ended up being the only primer I've been using since switching over to chemical free makeup. So yeah, it's the only one I've tried and I love it. I haven't gone to another primer, which probably says a lot. I'll just pop a little bit on the back of my hand and then using my ring finger, I'll just dab it in everywhere, even on my eyes. It's so soft, this product. This product sets in very quickly, so you don't really need to wait after you've put this on. The next step is foundation. Now, I don't use foundation all over my skin. I don't like the look of it, and I also feel like my skin is suffocating. I believe that you should allow your skin to breathe, um, and overall you'll have better skin if you do. If you can continuously cover it in product and leave it on day after day. Your skin will just get irritated and your pores will get clogged. And again, like I mentioned, I have very sensitive skin. So this happens to me 
just one day of having a full face of foundation on. So it's something I like to avoid. Obviously when I go to events and stuff like that, photo shoots, I will put on the full face. But other than that, it's just how I do it in today's video. So I use Vapor Organic Beauty Atmosphere Soft Focus Foundation. This is a foundation I've been using since moving over to Chemical Free Makeup. So it's probably about 10 years I've been using this. I've tried other ones, but I just always come back to this one. Um, and I use it in shade 125. Then I grab my Beauty Blender. This one is from Tropics and it's their Pure Precision Beauty Drop Sponge. And as you can see, it's made from a natural material. There's no color. So this is made from hypoallergenetic and latex-free material. So it's really good for sensitive skin, which is why I love it so much. A nice safe sponge to use. So I'll take the product, the foundation, and then I'll, I basically apply it around my eyes. I'll take the product around my nose and then I'll use it anywhere I have a bit of scarring, I have a bit of acne scarring around my chin. So I'll just lightly work it around those areas. The product starts to work better as it warms to your skin. I forgot to mention, make sure your beauty blender is damp. A dry beauty blender won't do a good job. You need it to be damp. So just run it under the tap and then squeeze it out with a flannel so you don't have any excess water. Um, and also remember to wash it when you're done because these things, they collect so much bacteria. And the next time you go to use it and wash it, it's just not gonna be that, that clean and good for your skin. So don't forget to do those things. And that's really all the foundation I use. It's time for concealer, which is such a vital step for me because I have so many marks from acne from when I was younger and even as I've been older so this is a step I can't miss and this is an amazing concealer it's the only concealer that I've ever used it's chemical free I won't bother to even look at another one because this one is so good it's Air Perez and it's their Arnica concealer I'm using shade brew now I go between brew when I've got a bit of colour, when I've got a bit of tan. And then in the winter when I'm a bit paler, I use Latte. So this is a full coverage concealer. It covers blemishes, pigmentation, dark circles, it does the lot. And what I love about this is that it actually heals your blemish while it's applied on your skin. It has antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties with all the ingredients that are in it. They're all natural plants. It's actually healing your skin. How incredible is that? And it's amazing coverage, like I mentioned. So I will literally just dot this anywhere I have a blemish or some scarring. I also like to do it around the edge of my nose. Thankfully, I don't really have bad under eye circles, so I don't really apply it there. If I do, it'll be with my ring finger and I will just literally dab it and I'll just do it for you so you guys can see. Then I blend the concealer and it's a mixture between my ring finger and the sponge. So it just depends on how much I want to blend it out. These products warm on your skin so it really works when you use your finger and then I'll grab the beauty blender once again and just blend everything in the last step for the face I lock everything in and I use RMS and this is their unpowder so I'm using their tinted unpowder and it's in shade two and three the first time I ever used this product I actually bought it in the one that was completely untinted so it was just white and it it was good but it just made me look too washed out so i went up to the two and three for a little bit of tint so i just take the product and i dab it into the lid and i take a fan brush like this this one is bel pierre i think the writing's rubbed off but i'll find it for you and i'll link it in the description box but I'll take the fan brush and then I will lightly 
put product just on the tip and then set all the product in that I've put on. I always find with this product as well, you can just put it on without any foundation and concealer. It really just evens out your skin tone. It's such a great product. I've used this, again, this is one of the first ever products I ever bought when I threw away all my chemical, chemically loaded makeup. And it's one that's stuck. I've always gone back to this and bought it. So it's good. Just do a light layer to lock all of that product in. Next, I move on to my eyebrows. Now, I know I have a lot of them. <laughs> There's a lot of my eyebrow, but I like to just give them a good tidy up and fill in areas that may be missing. So I start by just brushing them up, making them look a tiny bit tidier and controlled. My eyebrows can literally get so wild. I remember when I used to pluck my eyebrows so thin that they were barely there. Don't know why, I just used to really hate them. But now, I love them. I mean, I need to buy a new one. This is by a brand called Kripa, K-R-I-P-A. I know I've used so much of the product you can't even see, and it's Kripa Venezia, I think it is. This is such a random brand that I came across. I only have two products. It's this and a lip gloss. Oh, and a, lip, and a lip liner. I love all the products. I actually should go and buy some more. Well, I'm gonna need to because that's my eyebrow pencil. I like to use a pencil just because my eyebrows are thick. So I really need a good amount of product on them and for it to be quite defined. So I did used to use eyeshadow. I mean, I would still use it now. I just find that this is a lot better for me personally. So I just fill in areas. So I'll just fill in there. In the middle here, I don't like to be too heavy. So I'm really light handed. I do tiny brush strokes and I also do them in the direction of the hair. So these these hairs go up a little bit. And there's a reason I do it really light so that the next step doesn't ruin it. Then I take an angled brush like that. This one is an eyeliner brow brush number, I think it's 12. And this is Belle Pierre Cosmetics. Again, all the writing's rubbed off, but I will find it and link it below for you in the description box. But what I basically do is this will just help me brush out the product a little bit so it doesn't look so harsh and gives you more of a natural look. And when it comes to the middle, I just try and be very, very light-handed because I don't want sort of a block, thick block in the middle of my eyebrows. I have to be very careful with my eyebrows because I can start looking a bit crazy. And lastly, I like to set my eyebrows. So I go back to the brush that I used to brush the eyebrows up. It's literally just an old mascara brush. I've just given it a good wash and then I use it. So it's really a nice way of being sustainable, not throwing away a load of products. I use a really basic product and it's very nourishing and it's pure. It's aloe vera, just got it in a little pump bottle. I'll just pump, one pump is more than enough. Then I'll take the mascara brush and I will just roll it into, because it's quite gunky. So I just warm the product up and roll it into the aloe vera. And then I just set my eyebrows. Aloe vera is really good for promoting hair growth as well and nourishing the hair and the follicle. So I just think it's a nice product to use and it does the job that you want it to do as well as other jobs, other healing jobs when it's applied. 
and then if I have any left over, just rub it into my skin. Then I move on to my eyes. I like to keep it really subtle for day to day, but this is by Tropics and it's basically a, a little compact and these inserts are magnetic and they come out and you can put together your own compact with the shades that you like to use and the products you like to use. So I've got highlighter here, I've got eyeshadow, I've got blush, and it's also really sustainable because these are recyclable. So they get reused and you don't have to throw any of it away. It all gets kept over and over again. So this is what I've been into recently. And one of the products I have in here the only thing that's annoying is I don't have the shade name or number, but I will find it out for you. But it's this one here. It's like a pinky nude. I take my Dusty Girls makeup brush. So this is by Dusty Girls and it's just an eyeshadow brush. And I just sweep it over the lid. Like I mentioned, I don't like to put a lot of product on. And then I take the product outwards. I also take the product under the eye as well. Then I grab my eyeliner. This is by Lily Lolo. And it's their natural eye pencil in black. And I just do a very slight cat eye. What I do is I do it really lightly at first because I always make a mistake. like I just have done, but it's fine. Don't worry if you do, just keep it really light-handed. Don't put too much product on your eye. As the next step, we'll just correct it for you. I take that angled brush that I used earlier for my eyebrows and I just blend the eyeliner because it's a pencil you can blend it. Also this softens it because I don't like it to be too harsh. I struggle so much to get these matching. I also like just to blend the eyeliner out just a bit more so it doesn't look so harsh for day to day. I will lightly brush it up and away. I will also add eyeliner to the upper waterline. Just makes your lashes look a lot more fuller on the outer corners. So before I apply the mascara, I curl my lashes. These are very old eyelash curlers. These are Shu Amura. For me, this step is really vital because I love my eyes to look really open and the lashes to be Make sure I get all my eyelashes in and I will squeeze that and hold it for about 30 seconds. So I'm currently using Dr. Hushinka's Defining Mascara. I actually quite like this one. It's got a very small um, brush so you can really be very specific with how you target your eyelashes. I find that working from the tip of the eyelashes first keeps them lifted. I find if I get too heavy with the mascara at the base of my eyelashes, they just drop. I basically just do a very light layer towards the edges. I like to put more product on the ends of the eyelashes towards this edge of my eye. You really have to be gentle when you're doing this. You can't be heavy handed, otherwise the eyelashes will just drop. And I find with this bit wand, you can really do that. I'm such a messy mascara applier. Again, I find with this mascara, or all mascaras when I apply them, I like to let them dry a bit and then keep layering up the product. Wow, what a mess. 
So I basically do it in about two to three layers. So once I've applied the first layer, I will let that dry off a little bit. Then I'll go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back over to this eye and add another layer. And I kind of do this motion between the fingertips with a little bit of like side to side just to pull out the eyelashes a little bit more this product allows you to and then I'll go over to this eye and do the second coat as well but I don't know if with other mascaras, it's all different, like drying time might be different. One mascara may dry a lot quicker, but this is what I've found with this particular mascara. I'm not gonna lie, it's been so hard trying to find a natural mascara. I switched between this one and Anika's Long Lash. You just have to understand how your mascara behaves really. While I'm waiting for that coat to dry, I give my eyes a bit of a clean up because you can see how messy I am. So I don't use cotton buds anymore because we know how bad they are for the environment. So we've just stopped buying them. But I have come across these, which I bought. These are reusable cotton buds. They are just like your beauty blender. They feel just like a beauty blender. These are not natural. I haven't found any natural ones yet, but I just thought this was a good step up from the cotton buds for now. Um, so when you finish using them, you would just wash these. I will find these and I will link them in the description box below for you. But they work, they behave just the same as a cotton bud. Obviously, you can't put these in your ears, but for makeup purposes, it works fine. So because the product's dried, you can literally just brush it away. These need to be dry for that to happen. If you're not as messy as me then you can you don't have to do this bit but I'm terribly messy okay so I'm gonna go in with the third layer of the mascara again I literally just keep it to the ends of the eyelashes I don't go to the base I don't go very close then I'm gonna give them one last tidy up because that's my third layer on and then I like just to go back with the eyeshadow brush and just blend that all back in because where I've tidied up, I've taken away a bit of the product. And the last thing I do is I take the highlighter from my Tropics palette. Again, I don't know the name, but I will find it and I'll link it in the description box for you. I just take my ring finger and I'll just add it to my tear duct. Make sure you blend this in quite well because sometimes it could look a little bit wet. Then I move on to my bronzer. I'm using Air Perez again. And this is their Pure Rice Powder in Blush. This is a brand that I'm obsessed with. I just, everything they do is just amazing. You can see I've used this product a lot, but when you do first buy it, half is the darker bronze and half is sort of a lighter. I just like to mix them all in. I'm using a contour brush. This one is from Jane Ardale. I don't know why, but all of the writing comes off of these brushes. I will find that for you and I will put it in the description box for you, but I like to use an angled brush. And then, and then I suck my cheeks together like that. And I apply it to the line that is naturally made when you suck your cheeks together. My heaviest bit is just up here to about here, to like where my eyebrow is. And then I take the product up and around. And on my forehead, basically where the sun will naturally hit your skin. 
and then I do my jawline very lightly because you don't want an obvious line and then I take it down my neck so it's all blended in and then I do my nose so I basically will squeeze the brush like this apply product and I'll take it down the sides of my nose Then onto the blusher. So day to day, I just use the same product and shade that I use on my eyelids. I take my blusher brush. This one is from, God knows where it's from. I've got no idea, but I like a big blusher brush. So the biggest, poofiest brush you can find. I will try and find out who this one is by. I'm guessing it's Jane Ardale. I don't know, but I'll find it for you and the blusher I just put here so I'll do the same sucking in I do like to go quite heavy on my blusher and then the last step is highlighter so it's from the same tropics palette and it's the highlighter I used earlier on for the tear ducts of my eyes. So I'll take my ring finger again. It's got great pigmentation that you can see, but not too much. So I'll pop it on my cheekbones. I'll also take it just under my eyebrows. tiny bit above them, just a touch, the tip of my nose, also the bridge of my nose, and then my cupid's bow. And that is it for my face. So the last step is my lips. Now I like to keep this very subtle and neutral too. For the liner I use a colour closest to my lip colour. Um, the closest one I've found is Jane Ardale and it's their pink lip liner. It just says pink. So I line my lips really gently. I just colour them in slightly in the middle. So the product I use on my lips day to day is basically in between a lipstick and a lip balm. It's by Air Perez and it's their Wild Pansy Tinted Lip Bar, which looks like this. And I get it in the shade Zen. So it's light coverage, it's really nourishing, and it's just really enhancing your, your own lip colour. And that's it, that's my day-to-day -day chemical free natural makeup look. And that is it. That is my day-to-day -day natural chemical free makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it was informative and I hope it's given you confidence to go out there and purchase these products and use them. And also spread the word because we don't want anybody putting chemicals on their skin. Not only does it cause problems on your skin, but those chemicals leak into our bloodstreams and cause a hell of a lot of havoc within our bodies. And we don't want that for anybody. So spread the word and I will see you in next week's video. Before I go guys, one last reminder, please subscribe to my channel, hit that bell so that you don't miss when I next post, which is every Sunday. And also, like I mentioned, I'm over on Instagram. Come say hey, it's at Honestly Alessandra. And I'll see you next week, guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye guys. <laughs>